بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم أعزائي الطلبة I will talk about the otology and otosclerosis Otology or earache is a pain in the ear can be due to causes occurring locally in the ear or refer to the ear from a remote areas so we have number one local causes either a disease of the external ear like oil or otitis externe diffuse otitis externe or malignant otitis externe or a foreign body in the ear hard wax trauma to the ear or even malignancy of the external ear B we have the disease of the middle ear like the acute suppurative otitis media complicated chronic suppurative otitis media and malignancy of the middle ear or number two referred causes if the patient presents with otology during examination there is no local causes normal external ear and middle ear so the cause is from remote areas which has the ne same nerve supply similar to that of the ear we should understand the nerve supply of the ear the nerve supply to the auricle from the auriculotemporal nerve from the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve and the remaining part of the auricle are supplied by the lesser occipital C2 and greater auricular nerve C2 C3 and the concave of the auricle is innervated by the facial nerve while the nerve supply of the external auditory canal and the outer surface of the tympanic membrane the anterior superior part of the external auditory canal and the tympanic membrane are innervated by the auriculotemporal branch of the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve and the posterior inferior part of the canal and the tympanic membrane are innervated by the Arnold branch of the vagus while the tympanic cavity is innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve so the nerve supply of the ear comes from four cranial nerves trigeminal facial glossopharyngeal and vagus plus C2 C3 So if the patient present with otology and examination of the external and middle ears are normal so we should exclude any pathology in the remote area which has which have the same nerve supply to the ear so we should examine the areas which are innervated by the trigeminal nerve like teeth for any caries or impacted wisdom tooth and the TM joint for temporomandibular joint dysfunctions and osteoarthritis of the joint also we should examine the anterior two-thirds of the tongue and the floor of the mouth then we should examine the areas which are innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve like the posterior one-third of the tongue and the oropharynx and then we examine the areas which are innervated by the vagus nerve like the valiculae, epiglottis, pariform sinus, larynx and esophagus then we should examine the cervical spines
these are the areas which are innervated by the trigeminal nerve and the areas which are innervated by the glossopharyngeal vagus and C2, C3 and the number three is psychogenic causes when no cause has been discovered pain may be functional in origin but the patient should be kept under observation with periodic re-evaluation. Otalgia is a symptom and the treatment of otalgia is the treatment of the underlying cause of it. The second subject is the autosclerosis. Autosclerosis is an osseous dyscrasia of temporal bone affecting bone derived from the otic capsule. The otic capsule is the bony labyrinth. So the autosclerosis affect the bony labyrinth in which mature lamellar hard bone of the bony labyrinth is replaced by spongy weak woven bone of a greater cellularity and vascularity. The most common site of autosclerosis is a fistula antifenestrum which lies just in front of oval window. Stabies fixation occurs when the annular ligament or stabies footblade becomes involved by the autosclerosis. This is the most common site of the autosclerosis, fistula antifenestrum, just, it lies just in front of the auto, just in front of the oval window, fistula antifenestrum. This is the most common site of the autosclerosis. The female to male ratio is 2 to 1. 0.3% of the population have a clinical manifestation of autosclerosis. The condition is bilateral in 70%. 50% of patients with autosclerosis have a positive family history. The clinical features of autosclerosis it presents as a slow progressive conductive hearing loss. Why? Because of the fixation of the stabies at the oval window. And the typical age is the third decade. Usually the patients are in 20s. They have tinnitus in 70 to 80 percent and paracosis will sigh. Paracosis will sigh means the patient hears better in noisy than quiet surrounding. This is because a normal person will raise his voice in noisy surrounding. And the patient with autosclerosis he will an asma fil amakin al biha dawda ahsan nil amakin al hadi. وتفسير هذه الظاهرة أنه في الأماكن اللي بيها ضوضاء المتكلم يضطر إلى رفع مستوى الصوت ولذلك ال patient with autosclerosis hears better in noisy surrounding this is called paracosis pulsi the cochlear autosclerosis this is due to spread of the autosclerotic process to the basal turn of the cochlea. When the autosclerosis involves the cochlea, this is called cochlear autosclerosis. It produces high tone sensory neural hearing loss. The signs of autosclerosis during examination 
in 90% of the cases, there is normal tympanic membrane in 90% of the patients. But in 10% of the cases, we can see a pinkish or reddish area at the promontory. Through the tympanic membrane, we can see pinkish or reddish area. This is called flamingo pink, flamingo pink tinge or flamingo cyan. وهذه حقيقة شبهوا هذا الحمار أو ال pinkish area شبهوا شبهوها بحمار طائر فلامينغو فأجت التسمية من خلال طائر فلامينغو يسموه فلامينغو pink tinge or flamingo cyan and also it's called Schwartz's cyan. It is present in only 10% of the cases. In 90% of the cases, there is normal tympanic membrane. Pure tone audiometry of patient with autosclerosis, we see there is a conductive deafness. There is an airborne gap. This is the air conduction of the left ear, and this is the bone conduction. So there is an air bone gap. The bone conduction is better than the air conduction. And there is a dip in the bone conduction at 2 kilohertz. This is called Carhart notch, which is present in only 35% of the patient with autosclerosis. It is characteristic sign of autosclerosis, Carhart's notch. In tympanometry, the type of tympanogram in autosclerosis is type AS, normal pressure but low compliance because of impaired mobility of the stabies and fixation of the stabies at the oval window type AS AS related to the sclerosis treatment of autosclerosis the options are either surgery stabidectomy or stabidotomy and the second option is hearing aids if the patient refuse surgery or surgery is contraindicated so we provide them with hearing aids to improve hearing and mask the tinnitus. This is the procedure of stabidotomy. We remove the stabies suprastructures and we leave only the foot plate of the stabies. We make a hole or fenestration in the center of the photoblate of the stabies and then we put the bistin or the prosthesis into the fenestration and secured to the longer process of the incus. So the prosthesis connecting the longer process of the incus to the photoblate of the stabies. This is the procedure of stabidotomy. And this is the bistin or the prosthesis. Here we have many types of prosthesis or pistons for stabidectomy. What are the contraindications to surgery? In the presence of previous sensory neural hearing loss, in contralateral ear, if there is a perforation of the tympanic membrane here, we should do myringoplasty first and then stabidectomy later on. In the presence of infection, is contraindicated to surgery, and in the presence of the cochlear autosclerosis, because cochlear autosclerosis associated with sensory neural deafness. If we summarize the autosclerosis, we can say there is a gradual onset of conductive hearing loss 
bilateral in 70 percent positive family history in 50 percent and the female to male ratio is 2 to 1 and the typical age is 20s third decade normal tympanic membrane is present in 90 percent of the cases flamingo sign or Schwarz sign present in 10 percent pure tone audiometry, audiometry there's a conductive hearing loss and car heart not present in 35 percent and the type of tympanogram is type a s this is the summary of autosclerosis good luck